Homo neanderthalensis, natives of the ancient forests of Europe, also known as the Neanderthal, have long been associated with brutish behavior. But several recent studies contribute to a growing body of literature that challenges this stereotype. Until recently, Neanderthals were widely regarded as simple-minded savages, powerful hunters with short attention spans. But in recent years, scientists have discovered that they were far more sophisticated than previously thought, capable of caring for the vulnerable, burying their dead, and even adorning themselves with feathers and eagle talons. This refinement is also reflected in their anatomy. Neanderthals are sometimes thought to be incapable of throwing spears, creating precision-crafted tools, and portrayed as physically inferior. Regarding Neanderthal throwing ability, a new study presents the discovery of three long bones from the same left upper limb at the open-air site of Tourville-la-Riviere in the Seine Valley of northern France. New dating gave the site an age range of 183,000 to 236,000 years ago, and morphological and metric analyses show that the human remains from the site belong to the Neanderthal lineage. Interestingly, an abnormal crest on the left humerus indicates an unusually strong deltoid muscle attachment. Micro and or macro traumas associated with repetitive movements, similar to those documented in professional throwing athletes, could be the source of these abnormalities. As a result, the crest may be caused by micro and or macro traumas from repetitive movements, such as throwing sports that require strong rotational stabilization of the shoulder. Although the exact motion responsible for this abnormality is difficult to determine, throwing-related actions appear plausible, especially given the requirement for shoulder joint stability in spear throwing, as suggested in several Middle Paleolithic contexts. In addition, the interpretation that Neanderthal spears were used as throwing, rather than thrusting weapons, is based primarily on their inherent weight distribution, but it is consistent with abnormal skeletal and joint wear in Neanderthals which is similar to that seen in professional throwing athletes. Therefore, Neanderthal's extinction cannot be attributed to a physical inability to use or manufacture throwing spears and other tools, as both the anatomical and archaeological evidence show that they were capable of producing and handling such implements. Secondly, in a new study published in Quaternary Science Reviews, researchers challenge another long-held belief about our distant cousins that they were pursuit hunters only adapted to living in cold tundra environments. One reason researchers believe Neanderthals lived in a cold climate is that their remains have been discovered alongside those of Ice Age mammals, such as mammoths, woolly rhinos, horses and reindeer. Some argue that their physical characteristics, particularly short limbs and a large torso, were evolutionary adaptations to living in cold climates. Hunting in the woods typically requires speed and acceleration, or sprinting. This is because encountering prey, such as behind trees, can be unexpected and require a quick response. According to this woodland theory, Neanderthals may have been better suited to sprinting than distance running. The hypothesis that Neanderthals were built for speed provided researchers with a new perspective on their body form. Long-distance runners tend to be lean and have long limbs, whereas short-distance runners are much more muscular and may have shorter limbs in proportion to their overall body size. It's clear that the Neanderthal build resembles sprinters rather than long-distance runners. To investigate this further, scientists examined genetic variants previously associated with elite power or sprint athletes. They discovered that the majority of these power-related genetic variants were much more common in Neanderthals than in humans today. So it appears that the theory of Neanderthals as sprinters evolved for dense forest habitats, stands up to preliminary genetic scrutiny. Nevertheless, it is important to note that these findings are based on a small sample of Neanderthals whose DNA has been analysed. They are also based on the assumption that the genetic variants associated with power and speed in modern humans act similarly or identically in Neanderthals. However, it's also possible that Neanderthals carried other locomotion-related genetic variants that aren't found or studied in living humans. According to another recent paper, the remains of an early Neanderthal indicate that Neanderthals were heavily pumped up on male hormones, possessing a hormonal status unlike anything found in humans today. As with all historical studies, there are alternative explanations for the patterns we observe, 
but the approach points to a potentially valuable path for studying the evolution of the larger human family. For example, previous studies have cited Neanderthal's sturdy hand bones as evidence of their brute force strength. Nevertheless, another study paints a more nuanced picture of these early human ancestors, implying that Neanderthal's dexterity enabled activities such as cave painting and jewelry making. Like modern humans, Neanderthals were skilled tool makers and users, employing delicate and precise hand and finger movements in their daily activities. The findings indicate that members of Neanderthal communities carried out similar sets of tasks as modern humans. Thus, we can thus refute the widely held belief that Neanderthals were clumsy and brutish. What's more, despite their ability to make and use stone tools, Neanderthals were once thought to have had limited manual dexterity based on the anatomy of their thumb and forefinger, another claim that has now been challenged. Scientists used a three-dimensional dynamic simulation based on anatomical details and articular morphology of the thumb and index finger to determine the likely extent of Neanderthal thumb function. They discovered that these digits could make tip-to-tip -tip contact and concluded that Neanderthal's manual dexterity was likely not significantly different from that of modern humans. In fact, given the open configuration of the Neanderthal trapezial metacarpal joint, Neanderthal thumbs were most likely more mobile than modern humans. Lastly, because there is no significant difference between Neanderthals and modern humans in the locations of their muscle and ligamentous attachments, there is no anatomical argument that Neanderthals cannot move their thumbs and index fingers in the same way that modern humans do. Indeed, Neanderthals were able to use a precision grip, making their hand usage more comparable to skilled workers than brute force laborers. Scars left at the points where muscle attaches to bone were used by scientists to assess Neanderthals' ability to create precise objects. Precision grips necessitate deft manipulation of the index finger and thumb. Imagine writing with a pen, whereas power grips put more strain on the thumb and pinky. Each grip produces a distinct muscle use pattern, which can be assessed using skeletal remains. Forty-five skeletons housed at the Natural History Museum of Basel in Switzerland provided the framework for distinguishing between power and precision-generated hand grips. The researchers compared historical data to scans of six fossilized Neanderthal skeletons and six early modern humans who lived more than 40,000 years ago. The study's surprising findings revealed that all of the Neanderthal skeletons had muscle patterns similar to modern precision workers rather than brute force laborers. The surprise here isn't that Neanderthals have been shown to have an adaptation involving manual dexterity and a precision grip, but that this was ever in doubt. Indeed, the perception of Neanderthals as brutish and culturally unsophisticated has shifted in recent years. They could create cave art, jewellery and complex stone tools. Yes, they were extremely physically strong, far stronger than the vast majority of people alive today. And yes, they became extinct shortly after our species entered their territory. Nonetheless, this does not imply that they were physically inferior or less intelligent than modern humans. The debate about Neanderthal behaviours and capabilities continues unabated. However, anatomical studies now show that Neanderthals were not only intelligent, but also skilled in a variety of physical ways. Indeed, documentation of the types of animals hunted by Neanderthals supports the inference of ranged weaponry and is impressive in that it fully reflects modern hunter-gatherer capabilities. Neanderthal subsistence strategies were varied and systematic, ranging from big game and even bears to small game and birds to fish and other seafood such as seals and dolphins, and contrary to popular belief, they also relied heavily on nuts, mushrooms and a variety of other vegetation, though heavy reliance on meat was especially prevalent during cold climatic phases. In fact, Neanderthals exploited these resources in a specialized manner, similar to logistic behavior, implementing complex land use patterns, adapting to diversified landscapes and climates, and demonstrating a complex scenario of extensive knowledge and intensive exploitation of the landscape. Furthermore, Neanderthals not only cooked, but also purposefully used natural medications and kept their mouths clean with toothpicks. They were expert woodworkers with advanced arboreal skills, 
as well as possessing knowledge of plant and mineral properties for fire making and tar production. They probably also used animal fats to create lamps to light dark caves, deep in the primeval forests of ancient Europe. The majority of these technologies and behaviours were present by around 350,000 years ago, as per the dating methods used in the studies. The emerging picture of how we differ from Neanderthals is no longer one of the intelligent versus the stupid, the sophisticated versus the unsophisticated, the brutish versus the refined. Every species is uniquely adapted to the ecosystem in which they live. It turns out that the differences that were once used to classify Neanderthals as more primitive than modern humans, such as their build, may actually reflect adaptations to different survival needs. All of this lends credence to the notion that the Neanderthal extinction cannot be attributed solely to a lack of mental or physical abilities. Overall, this valuable and robust research reinforces the widespread acceptance of Neanderthals as complex and sentient beings, on par with ourselves.